Hi there. Let's start with chapter one this week in computerized accounting. What I'd like you to do is when you're in the materials section and content, you're going to click on the week one. You're going to go to the chapter one QuickBooks online test drive. This is our reading for this week and it's really important that you do this because the only way you're really going to gain an understanding into the QuickBooks is to follow along with each all the chapter reading. Um, in order to complete the project, you're going to need to complete every chapter. So this week we have one chapter that we're going to go over. And as you gain an understanding here, um, we are going to get a sample company called Craig's Design and Landscape Services. Now I'm going to walk you through how to do this, but you're going to also need to do this on your own and utilize this lecture if you get stuck on any um, of the various um, parts of the chapter. What you'll want to do in chapter one to gain this Craig's Design and Landscaping is you're going to click on this link right here. Know that this link will not save each time you start this drive a new session begins. So just remember you're going to want to complete this either in a setting or if not you'll go back and just start it fresh again. It's not as though um, you're going to be doing a lot with this sample company. You'll want to click I'm not a robot and you will continue on. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be shifting back and forth from the book so I f you can follow along with me and the software. Right now I'm in the software. So as in regards to the book, let me find it here. Um, here I have it. Um, we'll be going through the chapter one portion of the book. Number three here on page 11, complete the security verification, click continue. And once we're here, you'll see what we call the dashboard or the home page. Now, as you see here with the dashboard here, we can call it the dashboard here. It's also called the home page. And we get um, an understanding of seeing getting things done, or we can click business overview. Okay, as we go back here, getting things done is the first one I showed you, and the business overview is the portion that is up right now. If you um, look at this figure in the book, figure one, three, it'll show you the net profit and loss. And here you can see that the sample company is just like showing in the book. Our expenses are a little different because things have changed since this book was um, written. We've got our, our expenses for the last 30 days. For here, I have total expenses of $2,181. You can also look at the bank account. And as you see here, we've got 25 items to review in the checking account. And you see here, there's also 25 items to review. And it's a minus 3621. And we also have a minus 3621. So we can click on this checking account 
And we can look at these 26 items that we need to review for the checking account. We can also go and look at the QuickBooks balance in the savings account is 800 and the bank balance it's one. There's one item to look at here. A deposit for $200. We can also go and look at the MasterCard. In the QuickBooks we've got a MasterCard where we have seven items that we can preview. Okay? So basically what we're doing here is looking at the book and we are going to follow along with this chapter so we really can practice and gain an understanding on how the QuickBooks flows. As you see here, the acronym DAVE is used to identify QuickBooks Online Dashboard Graphics. Numerical data is changed into pictures using Pi, Bar, and Line Charts. We have data metrics, analysis, visualization, and evaluation. As we move on, we look at what we call the user interface. It's the link between the user and the software. So the QuickBooks online software includes a navigation bar. As you see in this navigation bar, we've got a menu, but the dashboard is the primary standard. The first thing you're going to see when you open up QuickBooks. The um, navigation board, as you see, includes dashboard, banking, it includes sales, it includes customers and leads, it includes cash flows, it includes expenses, it includes payroll, it includes reports, taxes, mileage, it includes accounting, my accountant, capital, and commerce. So you'll know that this navigation bar is really going to be the place you're going to access most of the tools within QuickBooks. Okay? Now it asks us, use the navigation bar within QuickBooks Online. Use the plus sign to create transactions. So what they're saying here, go over here and you're going to use that new plus sign and you'd be able to create transactions by clicking on this new plus sign. So, it asks us to look into that, to scroll that, and to be aware of how to access transactions involving customers, vendors, employees, and others. It also asks us to go over and look at the magnifying glass. The magnifying glass we can search for tips and recent transactions. Each time you sign into the test drive, transactions show the current date. Now our date's going to be different from the book because of course we're logging in, or I'm logging in, on March 20th. 
the author logged in on September 29th of 2021. So as you see, I go and look for this search. You will see um, there it shows the various transactions that have occurred. Recent transactions. You can see we can view more and you can see all the various transactions. Okay. Um, here we can use the gear icon and that gear icon is going to show a grouping for information about your company, lists, tools, and you'll see profile. Okay. Now this company is only set to last an hour. So just in case we are in it for longer than an hour, we are going to want to provide some extra time. It's saying to use the test drive sample company data for more than an hour. Select accounts and settings right here. Okay, and then it will want us in the other preferences area, area to click on the pencil icon and change it to three hours. So in the advanced setting, other preferences, we'll click on the pencil icon and instead of sign me out if inactive for one hour, we're just going to change it to three hours and we're going to save that. Okay. Now, as we move back, you see in the other preferences, we completed this in figure 1-7. We then return to the dashboard. The question mark help is used for QuickBooks Online. And to close the help, we would just X out of the help scenario. So when you need help, you click on that help to close out. You can just close right out of it. Okay. As we move on, the dashboard displays, and this is the starting point for all the different features that are available in QuickBooks Online. So the dashboard's business overview includes a picture of the current status. As you see here, let me get out of that. Go to the dashboard, the business overview gives you an understanding of the income statement, the profit and loss, of the expenses, the bank account, any invoices, and your list of sales over the past 30 days. So you can go into each one of these as they ask you in the bank's account section, drill down on checking. The bank, the savings in the MasterCard data appears and it shows you the various number of transactions below. Scroll down and look at these various transactions. Now, even though our dates may be different, we do have the same number of transactions in the bank accounts here, in the checking, in the savings, and in the MasterCard. 
the profit and loss, or the income statement, the way we can see it is we can go here, excuse me, dashboard, and we can see our profit and loss right here, showing the income and the various expenses. This is showing, as of March 20th, the income statement. And again, March 20th, that's the day I'm logging in here. We can also locate the profit and loss by going to reports and accessing the profit and loss in the same respect. Okay? Now, in this scenario, we've got the first two and a half months of the um, income statement. You can always um, adjust these reports by customizing them to the dates that you're interested in. If I want this for the past 30 days, This month, we can run that report. Hmm. Let's see, that's March 1st to March 31st. I guess that's really um, what they did to make it the same. It was going to be February 20th to March 20th, which would give us the past 30 days. Okay? So just another way we can go to the dashboard and pull up for the last 30 days in this respect. Okay, um, moving on. Okay, that's what we just went through. Now it asks us to open up this income statement and export the PDF. Okay, so what they are asking is open up this and we can print this to a PDF. Okay, you can save it in whatever, um, I'm just, I know I have a file in here for this class. Somewhere. Uh, what period it is? Computerized accounting. And I could say Craig's P and L. Okay. And we could save that as a PDF. Okay. If you displayed the profit and losses PDF, we can click the X, then select QuickBooks logo to return to the dashboard. Display the X, then the QuickBooks logo brings us back to the dashboard. Now another thing they want you to do is Start invoicing. Select the new tab and we'll click on invoice in the customer's list. The new tab, invoice in the customer's list. Okay. As you see, if a Hi Craig page appears, click on the left arrow to return to the dashboard. 
a blank invoice appears. At the bottom of the invoice page, there's a selection for Customize. Click Customize, New Style, and change the Helvetica 10 point to 12 point. So as you go down here, Customize, New Style, we can change this. Different font, Helvetica, switch it to 12 point, and we are done. Okay? Observe that the fonts on the invoice increased. So it's just going to be a little larger for you to see. Okay? New invoice. Want. I want to put it 12. And all we'll do though then is click done. Okay. As we move on to page 14, the gear icon includes settings and preferences for your company. The gear selections show various highlights here. You can change accounts and settings. You can manage users, access all lists, and go to the audit log. So as you see here, we're clicking on the gear and we're clicking here on accounts and settings. The account and setting page so shows company as the default. What we're going to do is click advanced down here. Okay. And it asks us to review the information. If you look at the chart of accounts, they want us to select the pencil icon to include account numbers. Toggle Enable Account Numbers to put a check mark in the Show Account Numbers box. So Chart of Accounts here, we'll click the pencil, Enable Account Numbers, we want to show the account numbers and we want to save that. Okay. Click Save. Make sure Advanced is selected. In the Other Preferences area, you can increase the number of hours your company is active. The default is one hour. So in advanced, as you go down here, the number of hours your company is active. Again, we had switched it to three hours. We switched it to three hours and we saved it. If you plan to spend time working on chapter one, make this selection. Otherwise, you're going to just automatically be signed out after one hour. Okay? Now, the chart of accounts is each company's account list. It includes 
two categories. Balance sheet accounts, which would show bank, credit card, assets, liabilities, oops, accounts receivable. Excuse me one second here. Somehow I need to make sure this is plugged in. And all the accounts associated with the balance sheet. Then we have an income and expense accounts part of the income statement. This shows income and expense accounts. We know those are temporary accounts. <clears throat> As you see, <coughs> the chart of accounts is set up by 1,000 numbers being assets, by 2,000 numbers being liabilities, 3,000 numbers being equity, 4,000 is income, 5,000 cost of sales, and 6,000 expenses. We'll go to the gear icon and we're going to click on chart of accounts and we're going to see the chart of accounts. So we're going to go to the gear icon and we're going to see the chart of accounts Well, I thought that's what we were going to do. Let's make sure I'm not click the gear chart of accounts. Okay. Click the gear. Here we go. Chart of accounts. We're going to see our chart of accounts. Okay. My chart of accounts does not have a number column. Then, if that's the case, if we don't have a number column, we are going to see your chart of accounts, and that one can appear with a number column. So if it doesn't have a number column, we're going to go to Accounts and Setting, Advanced, chart of accounts so we'll go to here accounts and setting advanced and my chart of accounts and click on the pencil icon okay and from there <clears throat> we'll enable account numbers and show the account numbers should be selected. Enable account numbers and we'll show those account numbers and we'll save it. I guess good old Craig did something before me so <clears throat> mine has not been saved. <coughs> okay, there are two balance columns the QuickBooks balance and the bank balance. We should know what the difference is. The QuickBook balance represents the check register. The bank balance shows the balance at the bank that's linked to the QuickBooks online account. If you've entered a check, then the check is for 100 and the checking account balance is 1,000, 900 would be shown as the QuickBook balance. The bank balance is going to be 1,000 until that $100 check clears the bank. Okay? So the QuickBook balance represents all the transactions that have been entered. The bank balance is only going to show the adjusted balance once it clears the bank. To add account numbers shown on this table, select the pencil icon to batch edit. 
a number column appears on the chart of accounts page. So you see here, we can click on, let me just make sure I'm doing it right here. Chart of Accounts, to add the account numbers shown, click the pencil icon to batch edit. And column number appears on the chart of accounts page. Add account numbers to the accounts shown within the chart of accounts. Then we would hit save. Let me just make sure I'm doing that right. Chart of accounts. Here, we can click that to batch edit. Here is where we can put in the numbers. So for the checking account, it tells us we would add 1,000 for checking, 1010 for savings. 1,000 for checking, 1010 for savings. And then you will just continue on down the road here, accounts receivable, 1020, inventory asset, 1025. Just enter on down all of these accounts that they are suggesting down here. And then when you have completed that, you'll hit save. So as we continue, <clears throat> with page 15, we will notice that each of the accounts will give you a numerical number along with the account and specifically what type of account. We know bank accounts, asset accounts, liability accounts, equity accounts are all part of the balance sheet. Now, with our um, QuickBooks, we're going to sign out. So here we've got Manage It, and we can sign out of the account. If you're not using Craig's Design and Landscaping Services, it's going to close automatically. When you exit or sign out, your account numbers aren't going to be saved. Each time you log back in, that sample company is going to begin again. So, you can go back in here to start the company again. Go right back in there and Click I'm not a robot. And start back into the company. Remember the various things that we um, talked about. Remember at the top of the dashboard you'll see six selections. My experts, help, the um, magnifying, any notifications, the gear tool, and then over here you can sign out. Okay. 
you can click on the magnifying glass and see the recent transactions. Okay? So, if you go back here, you click on the magnifying, you can search for various items, and you also can look at the recent transactions that have just occurred. Squeaky clean car wash. You could look at, at whatever you want in terms of recent transactions. Okay. Reports allow you to use standardized reports, custom reports, and management reports. So go over all the various reports. You can also look at a journal report. Then know that in subsequent chapters, we're going to use a variety of um, various samples and sometimes creating your own. But as you see, you've got some various items for check your progress, just so you know that you are on track. Creating invoices, you can go through the process of creating an invoice, click sales, you can look at a sales transaction, and then showing that an invoice has been paid. They'll also show you how to look at an aging accounts receivable. and various reports. You will also learn how to enter a bill. So I'm just going to go over this one with you. So you can go to New Vendor Bill. It will ask you Vendor, we're going to select Lee Advertising. We'll find Lee Advertising. The bill date is going to be our current date. We'll click on Advertising as the category and the amount is $250. Okay, we'll save and close. To do a check, we can again select the Payee Computers by Jenny. Computers by Jenny. Check number 71 is automatically completed. We'll select supplies as the expense. Type purchased tablet computer.
650. Your balance field could differ, but the key here is that you're becoming familiar with how to navigate the various um, aspects of QuickBooks. Again, look at the journal report. And then, um, when you have completed this, you can finish with the review and the chapter homework. So I hope this has helped you gain a little understanding in uh, navigating for chapter one.